You're supposed to die to Genichiro at the start of the game, but what if you don't? That thought was teasing me for weeks after the game's release, and as I got good against him, my mind began to race with ideas. Maybe he won't cut my arm off, and maybe I'll go through the game without a prosthetic arm. What if I'm able to turn his bow into a prosthetic weapon? I thought maybe the credits will roll right here and now. Game over. What if it just... Oh. Oh. At least there's a little bit of lore here. Um, the Ashina combat style is all about victory at any cost, and Genichiro, using the ancient samurai cutscene technique, is definitely in keeping with that ethos. A shinobi'd know the difference between honor and victory. The divine heir is coming with me. As you head into the Ashina outskirts, still thinking about how you totally beat Genichiro and it isn't fair, Remember to head upwards and to the left as soon as you arrive at the cannon section. There's a memorial mob merchant up here who sells firecrackers for 500 sen, and it is one of the strongest prosthetic tools in the game. And as soon as you clear the cannon section, double back here before you fight the ogre. There's a merchant tucked away, and he's in a nook that you wouldn't really think to visit. Anayama, dressed in patches and tatters, We'll trade information for 150 sen before he upgrades his wares. His prized possession is the Phantom Kunai. It's this shuriken upgrade that you can purchase for 3000 sen. And it takes a little while for you to work towards this, and one shuriken now costs two spirit emblems, but it's the best method you have really to do damage to enemies at a distance, and this is kind of good against bosses that require a little bit more health damage before their posture begins to fall. And Anayama's ambitions have only just begun. Do you mind finding out what the Ashina Samurai want right now? You tell me that, I can sell it to them. The Ashina are low on salt, having used it all up during their constant warfare. You can get this information on the bridge by the lake at the back of Ashina Castle. Next, he needs an assistant to help him loot the battlefield. There's a peddler named Anayama near Ashina Castle looking for help. You should give him a hand. The perfect companion for Anayama to manipulate is Kotaro, a gentle giant found early on in Senpo Temple. Give Kotaro the red and white pinwheel and he'll come around to the idea. All right, I'll do it. I'll go and see. This unlocks a few more sugars and an infinite store of black gunpowder and scrap iron. But for the ending to their questline, I'm gonna keep you around till the end of the video because it contains spoilers. To the right of the cannon bearer is a hidden drop down to a ledge containing a bunch of good items. Uh, more interesting though is this bit of snake skin hanging from a tree. It's a great little piece of environmental storytelling and it tells you that the snake really gets around this area. A couple of tips in these videos are going to be lifted from popular speedrunning strats. Um, the most useful one I've found so far is this way of dealing with the chained ogre. So you crush a gachin sugar, walk up to this brazier, and then take a sharp left. This enables a backstab while he's still chained, and it's a good idea no matter how experienced you are, because let's be honest, we've all been hit by this grab attack. After you defeat the ogre, you can actually take a fairly pointless shortcut to Headless, if you like. This gap in the wall enables a wall jump to this ledge, allowing you to open this door from behind, and enabling you to die to Headless faster. If you didn't know, all Headless enemies drop Spiritfall consumables, which are infinite use versions of the sugar items that consume three spirit emblems. They don't last quite as long, but if you have two Divine Confetti handy, then you have a shot at beating this Headless, which drops my favorite sugar, Akko. And while we're here, did you know that Sekiro actually has a passive ability called Night Eye? It's explained in one of the loading screens, and you can actually see it activate when you're in a dark place. And speaking of eyes... After this encounter, look to the right of the first idol you come across. You'll find a small Senpo assassin who dreams of marrying the Great Serpent. This is weird, so kill him and you'll receive the Herb Catalog scrap, which details where exactly to offer oneself. This explains the palanquin within the valley, as there are two examples in the game of these being used for marriage, and them being used in this really formal ceremony might explain why the snake briefly stops its aggression towards us when it spots us going inside. 
In an earlier video, we talked about what happens if you don't take the second death blow on main bosses, so maybe something will happen to you if you don't take a second death blow on the snake later on. Hmm. Your first death blow on Gyobu refills a resurrection, which you can use to get an extra line of dialogue out of him. Quite a few main bosses react in this way. Astonished that you're still able to stand, he says. Do you stand? Genichiro has many burdens, and I consider you one of them! A third resurrection is possible with a Jizo statue, and while Gyobu says nothing here, this technique will be used in our next video, which is about Ashina Castle, which reveals a fascinating little piece of lore about a character here, so subscribe, and click the notification bell thing as well so you don't miss it. Now, after Gyobu, go up the staircase and have a chat with the guy in the Tengu mask. He gives you a task to kill rats, vermin that he says are creeping about Ashina's lands. Senpo assassins count as rats, and there's a group of them to the right of the castle gate. Go up there, kill them, then go back, and you receive the Ashina skill tree, which includes honestly probably the most powerful abilities in Sekido. Uh, you've got deflection enhancements, you've got enhancements to combat, and it also contains, at the end, what is arguably the best combat art in the game, Ichimonji Double. But we'll talk about combat arts in another video. Above the Tengu, accessible with a few ledge hangs, is a set of prayer beads, which you might have missed. And I should also mention there's a gourd seed around the corner at the memorial mob. Just remember, you have to scroll down. I appreciate how gimmicky and well presented the blazing bullfight is, right? But this fight probably is one of the less enjoyable fights in the game. Luckily, if you want to skip it, you can. Only do this on New Game Plus because you do miss out on a prayer bead. So you hop up to this guard tower, you ledge jump at an angle off this wall, and you grapple onto the ledge. Go to the top of the roof, run off at this exact angle as late as you can, and sort of curve your character around the tree. Take your second jump right here, and pray. You know what, after doing this like for 20 minutes, I think I'll just fight the bull next time. To reward your prayer and your devotion, you arrive at this old woman right after the skip, actually. Show her how devoted you are by consuming all of your important items in front of her. As a reward for praying, you get other items of equal value. <laughs> uh, the third prayer does net you some divine confetti, which is a pretty rare item this early in the game, so it's worth it for that. On the bridge opposite this woman are two really nondescript soldiers. It's easy to run past them, but don't, because one of them actually drops the gatehouse key, which you can use in the reservoir to loot Gyobu's broken horn. So before some of you type, I learnt nothing new from this video, did you know that the horn itself is from Gyobu's own helmet? It was snapped off during the rebellion and that its description reveals that after he was defeated, Ishin Ashina was so impressed by Gyobu's strength that he awarded him with the spear of none other than Shuzen Tamura, the same general that we see Ishin defeat in the opening cutscene. As we talked about in the Hirata Estates video, this is Inosuke, a man blinded and crippled during his fight with Lady Butterfly. Years later, his mother gives us the means to travel back to the Harata Estates, talking about the Divine Prince endlessly. But did you know that when you kill Lady Butterfly, both her and her son die? The young master. Uh, the events uh, of the past have been resolved. <laughs> the following four facts are really good, but they take place after acquiring the Mortal Blade, and after completing the final sequence of the game. As always, I have an escape route, you can go click the merch link down below and it'll evacuate you from this video to a safer place that's spoiler free, because you shouldn't continue watching if you have not finished the game. During the siege of Ashina Castle, you can take a shinobi kite to the Ashina outskirts, unlocking an invaluable section of the game. Herein, at the outskirts wall, stairway, is probably the best farming location in the game. So from the statue, simply head backwards towards the bridge, backstabbing all the way, and you'll receive a boatload of XP, gold, and rare upgrade materials. 17. Maybe it's best if you did miss this one, honestly. When we left Anayama, he was overjoyed with the companion we brought him, but now, during the siege of Ashina Castle, 
He's bitten off more than he could chew. <laughs> they took it all! My money, my stock, everything! But... Kotaro drove them away, at least. Right, pal? <laughs> oh, the big guy's fallen asleep. Yes. He's sleeping soundly. Please, don't make that face. There's nothing for you to be sad about, good sir. Oh, that's right. Good sir, I stowed away something good. Something just for you. My last piece of product. <laughs> Interested? The purpose of this quest line is to give you the promissory note. It only costs one sen, but it discounts the cost of all items by 10% which is a nice boost, because you're going to want to clear out merchant stock before New Game Plus, and it carries over into the beyond. A sen saved is a sen earned. Unfortunately, this is the end of Anayama and Kotaro. After you acquire the Mortal Blade, don't forget to give a merciful death to Hanbei the Undying. And as he prepares for death, he reveals the name of a close friend. Splendid. I must give my thanks to Sekijo. Sekijo is the sculptor, a man who Hanbei understandably would have become close to after all of his immortal years. For just as Sekiro translates roughly to one-armed wolf, Sekijo would translate roughly to one-armed orangutan. That's because Ro translates to wolf and there's something called a shoujo, which is a sort of Japanese monkey spirit. Uh, it has a red face, red hair, and a fondness for alcohol, which are descriptions that fit the sculptor, uh, especially as you'll see in the next few facts. Later in the game, Emma leaves to tend to Kuro and Ishin at the top of Ashina Castle, and while she's gone there, during the siege of Ashina, the sculptor, too, takes this opportunity to leave. If you talk to the merchant here around this time, he mentions that the sculptor left, muttering something about the flames. And past the corpses of Anayama and Kotaro, past this squadron of government soldiers and past some red-hot claw marks, there is the demon of hatred terrorizing the landscape. This is Sekijo. It's the sculptor, engulfed by Shura's wrath. So Sekiro himself recognized the sculptor when I fought him, which, as I would come to realize, is because I eavesdropped a lot and I shared a lot of sake, which led to my character figuring out who the Demon of Hatred is. If you don't do these things throughout the game, Sekiro does not recognize the Demon of Hatred, but the Demon of Hatred always recognizes you at the end. I hope you're preparing to cry over the next few weeks. This old woman always was foreshadowing a demon appearing, because back then she asks, where do you think all that hatred from the war? Where do you think it goes? And now her dialogue here, at the end, depends on whether you knew the demon's identity this whole time. And of course, now you do. To carve and sculpt Buddhas for so long, only to be wreathed in the flames of hatred and turn into a demon. It was the fate he made for himself, to pay for his own mistakes. And you put an end to that. You sent him on his way. I'm sure he's grateful for that. I know, you're all aching for a lore video, and while I do have them in the works, trust me, uh, I enjoy talking about the gameplay more right now, uh, as you all wrap up your own playthroughs. It's actually been a difficult last few months. Uh, I have to balance the needs of my firstborn child, who was born in January, and I also have to balance the needs of YouTube and Twitch, and also Teespring as well, so thank you for being patient. Um, big thank you to all of you who actually bought a t-shirt over the last few weeks. It's doing really well. I didn't think anyone wanted merch, but now I'm at the point where I think I should actually work with an artist every month and throw a ton of money at them so that they can make cool designs for you guys, which if you know me, you probably know that I dig that sort of stuff. I love it. Um, but I'll see you next time. Remember to ring the bell if you want to be notified of new videos, and I'll see you then.